I couldn't resist showing you this gorgeous case which um, Dr. Antonina Kalmakova of CST Healthcare in Kiev shared with me. It's, it's really almost a, a low-power spot diagnosis um, because they all look the same really. Once you know what this is, you'll probably be able to diagnose it at scanning magnification in the future. It presents as this nodule, and, uh, and I think that's fairly typical. It's circumscribed nodule with um, a mixed population of cells. There are blue cells, which probably represent lymphocytes, and there are pale cells, which probably represent histiocytes. So let's look at this at higher magnification. And it really is absolutely stunning. There's, there's a nice sort of the top of the lesion with the lymphoid cells and the, and the histiocytes. And uh, there's, there's a little bit of background sclerosis, which is often a feature in this lesion. And um, we'll look at it at higher magnification. And I'm sure most of you know exactly what this is. Now, I just fortuitously come across a field that we really need to look at very, very promptly at high power. So uh, before getting there, one can see the lymphocytes and one can see the histiocytes with a vast amount of pale grayish blue cytoplasm, large vesicular nuclei, and uh, also a population of lots and lots of plasma cells and then we see uh, in this field, um, we can see uh, that the cytoplasm of the giant cells contains uh, ingested lymphocytes, so-called emperipolisis. And we'll look around more and see what else we, we can find. But this is just oh, it's a, su su such a beautiful case. There you can see there's an awful lot of plasma cells, which are very typically seen in, in this condition. And um, there's a nice example of emperipolisis there. Uh, and similarly, that there's another one sitting in a little vacuole. Now, um, just uh, I'm going to show you some immunohistochemistry on, on this case. The uh, plasma cells are, are polytypic, and I'm not going to show you Catherine Lambda, but that was done. Here's another lovely emperipolisis with the histiocytic nucleus there, and there are phagocytosed or emperipolisis, whichever it really is. Uh, and there we can see the, the uh, hyaline collagenous material, which uh, is often a feature. So I think that's probably, I'll just go down to a lower power, just so that you can, we can just wander around it. If you get this, um, this image into your mind, uh, it really is so characteristic, and I, there isn't a differential diagnosis, I don't think, really. This is reside Dorfman disease. Now, the only question one has to ask is whether this is occurring in the skin as, as part of a systemic disease, uh, which is quite common in which case lesions are usually multiple, or is this primary cutaneous reside Dorfman disease where lesions may be multiple or, or sometimes they're, um, that it, it can present as a solitary lesion. Isn't that beautiful there? There's the central nucleus and all these lymphocytes within the cytoplasm. Um, Oh, that's gorgeous. That, that, there's another one there. So if you want to see, if you had wanted to see emperipolisis, this is about as good as it's, it's ever going to get. So um, just before I go off it, 
Um, I don't think there's anything else that one can pick up on the H and E. But I think, to be honest with you, the truth of the matter is you don't need any immunohistochemistry. It's nice to have it, but uh, in my view, uh, the only thing I'd want to do is to find out whether it's primary or secondary. But Antonina is uh, very interested in the immunohistochemistry, so I'll start with the S100 which unfortunately the block has cut out quite a bit so we're not really going to see it to its best advantage but there, uh, nevertheless it is worth looking at um, because what you can see is that the, the very large cells uh, showing M. periparesis uh, RS100 protein positive and that's a nice field there because you can see the S100 protein positive histiocyte and you can also make out the emperipolesis so you've um, that field has got given us double value for money but um, S100 positive cells are scattered around the place not all of the uh, infiltrate uh, represents S100 um, positive cells. So that's what we see with the um, the S100, uh, and then we've got we've got. Uh, let me just see if I can find it. Uh, I think uh, this is um, this is CD163, and that's typically positive in uh, in um, Rosai Dorfman. And, um, well, I don't think one can argue. Isn't that gorgeous? One can't really argue with that. There is the um, higher power. Oh, my goodness, that is that is more than beautiful. It's, it's exquisite, isn't it? Look at all those uh, uh, sort of dendritic processes, aren't they? Going all over the place, producing the most gorgeous pattern. So that's um, extremely, extremely uh, beautifully positive. Gosh. Uh, and then uh, we want to find the, the CD68. I just got to hunt around a bit to see where it is. I think this is CD68 here. I believe that's it. So let's just look at that. And uh, we'll look at that in higher power. Well, it's certainly positive, but I think the uh, CD163 wins hands down. So, um, so that's, that's CD68. And I think um, I think that's all that, that we need to look at. So I, I think this is such a lovely case. And I hope, uh, for those of you who haven't seen this before, then this is an absolute treasure. And for those of you who have, well, it'll just reinforce the histology of Rosai Dorfman. And remember, it's an H&E diagnosis. The only important thing is really to distinguish whether it's a primary cutaneous lesion or whether the skin is being involved as a manifestation of a much more widespread typical reside Dorfman disease. Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.